All right, so here's a Biot-Savart law problem uh, where you have an infinite plane at, at, at x equals 10 carrying uh, some current surface density charge here of 100 milliamps per meter along the AZ direction, and you also have a line described by x equals 1, y equals negative 2, which is carrying its own current also in the AZ direction. And the question asks you to find the magnetic field density H at a specific point, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so um, just like how you've been asked to find electric field due to several um, distributions of charge, um, you're asked now to find the total magnetic field intensity H. Um, there are two sources of magnetic fields here in this problem. You've got the magnetic field from the plane and the magnetic field from the line. So first, let's focus on finding the magnetic field due to the plane. So if you look at this illustration here, um, I have on your standard XYZ Cartesian coordinate plane in 3D here. Um, here's the point in red, 0.432, roughly plotted there. And we have this blue plane, it's supposed to be a blue plane intersecting at x equals 10 that occupies all y and all z. It's supposed to go on infinitely in the y and z directions, but uh, for the sake of being able to fit in this drawing, I've just drawn it like this. And these arrows here show that um, the K given to us is 100 milliamps per meter in the AZ direction. And that's uh, the that's represented by these arrows here. Okay, they're all going in the AZ direction. And that's going to be important for when we're doing the cross product. So here, once we do our actual computation, uh, there's a formula you'll find in your textbook and in the notes and everything that says the magnetic field intensity H of a plane uh, can be found by multiplying one half into K cross AN, where AN is the normal vector out of the plane towards the point of interest. So um, for this first part, we can plug in uh, one half times 100 um, AZ. I just dropped the units for now. So it's 100 in the AZ direction cross, and I put negative AX here. And the reason for that is um, if the plane is here at x equals 10, and the point I care about is that the coordinates x equals 4, y equals 3, z equals 2, uh, this point I care about is in the negative x direction from the plane. So that's why I take AN to be negative AX. This normal vector should point in the direction of the point relative to the plane. Okay, so if this point was maybe like, you know, at x equals 20, y equals 3, z equals 2, then this would be positive ax. And then I compute this cross product to find the answer. So uh, if you don't know the trick for easily finding the cross product without having to use a determinant matrix, um, there's this handy cycle thing. And uh, the way you're supposed to use it is if you cross ax with ay, Basically, if you follow the direction this arrow, then you'll get positive AZ. If you're to cross AY with AX, um, you're going to get negative AZ. Because remember, with cross products, uh, the order in which you cross things matters, right? So if I put AX cross AZ here instead, um, I would go against these arrows. So I would get negative AY. But since I'm doing AZ cross AX here, I'm going to get AZ cross AX gets you positive AY. That's going to come up again later in this question. Um, so you'll notice I did have this negative AX here. I just basically just brought it out to the front. Um, doesn't really make a difference whether you uh, cross AZ with negative AX, you'll get negative AY. Or if you just take this negative out from the start, you'll end up with the same answer. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, let's find the magnetic field due to the line here. Okay, so do 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 do. So um, I've drawn uh, the scene again. Uh, now I have the same point at 4, 3, 2, but now I have this blue line of current going the AZ direction. And um, the formula for magnetic field 
due to an infinite line as given by this. And um, you'll notice that it's going in the A5 direction. Um, so even though the current's going in the Z direction, uh, the magnetic field will go in the A5 direction, which is effectively around it. Okay, and you can deduce that by using the right-hand rule. So if you stick your right thumb in the direction of the current, which is straight up in front of you, if you try to curl your fingers into a fist, um, you'll see that your, curl, your fingers curl in this direction. And that's the direction of A5. That's the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so I um, is given to you earlier in the problem. And um, what you need to find is rho here. So rho is just the magnitude of this rho vector. And the row vector is just the, you can think of it as the shortest possible perpendicular distance from uh, the point to the line, right? So the point is 4, 3, 2, and the line we know is x equals 1 and y equals negative 2. So because the point, the line is what is described by x equals 1, y equals negative 2, it can take any z value. So if we take the z value 2, then these z values will cancel. That gives us the shortest distance between the line and the point, which is going to be somewhere around here. Say this is at about roughly z equals 2. Um, and once you work that out, you'll get this for your rho vector. Finding its magnitude is in straightforward. You'll get root 34. Um, and then you can get the a rho vector by taking your rho vector and dividing it by its magnitude. So remember the a rho vector is just a vector in the direction of rho with a magnitude of 1. And then you'll get this for your a rho, uh, which will be useful in a second. Um, so the formula says that this thing is going in the a phi direction, but because we're dealing with mostly Cartesian coordinates, it's going to be kind of awkward and clumsy to deal with that. So we want to transform this a phi into something else. So again, we're going to use this cross product trick. This is what it looks like for cylindrical coordinates. Um, a rho cross a phi equals a z. A phi cross a z equals a rho. A z cross a rho equals a phi. And uh, the same works if uh, you were to cross a phi with a rho, you get negative a z, and so on and so forth. So a phi, uh, in order to get that, we can cross a z with a rho. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to substitute a rho in the h formula here. We're going to substitute this with um, a z cross a phi down here. That's what we've done here. This used to be a phi. But um, we know that a z cross a rho is a phi thanks to that little trick. We plugged in 20 pi here. This is given to us. This is given to us. Um, and this should be 2 pi, uh, well, this is pretty serious mistake, actually. Um, this should not be 6. This should be magnitude of rho. And the magnitude of rho is root 34. Root 34, like that. So we plugged in this for the magnitude of rho, which we solved for earlier. And we transformed a phi into az cross a rho. And hey, we know what a rho is. We just we found that too. So we can slap that in there as well. Um, this 5 over 3 is what you get after you simplify this stuff. Um, and there's supposed to be a... Um, yeah, hold on a second. Three days later. Yeah, okay. So now it's right. So... We last left off going from this step to this step. So um, once you simplify this, you'll get 10 over root 34. Um, and you'll plug in a rho for this thing, which we found earlier up here, right? Um, still, don't, still don't really care about units yet. We'll put them in at the end. And um, so now you got to evaluate a z cross this plus this. So you can think of it as like distributing az into here. And using the same cross product rules, um, az cross ax will get you ay. 
AZ cross AY will get you negative AX. So that's where that comes from. And once you work this out and you calculate it, you'll get this is your answer for magnetic field due to the line. And we're not quite done yet. Oh, and remember, it's in milliamps from here. We're not quite done yet. Um, we just need to add the magnetic field due to the line, which is this part, these first two terms, and the magnetic field due to the plane. And don't forget your units, milliamps per meter in the case of this question. And that's the total magnetic field due to these two currents.